I'm Pastor Rocky Randall from Iola Baptist Temple, and I wanted to make this video real quick to ask the most important question anyone could ever ask you, and that's this. If you were to die today, are you for sure that you'd go to heaven? Now, many will answer that question by saying, I hope so, I think so, I, I've never done anything really, really bad, or I've been pretty good, and so I think God would let me into heaven. Well, I want to take a minute to show you what the Bible says. First of all, in Romans 3.23, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I hope you're willing to admit that you have sinned. We've all sinned. And you can't think that your sin is less than someone else's sin. You have to just admit this. You have sinned against a holy God. He's perfect. And he only expects perfection. You and I have all fallen short. Romans 3.23 says that. And so you might say, well, what about telling a little lie or something like that? That's not that big of a deal, right? Well, let's look what the Bible has to say about that. In Revelation 21.8, the Bible says, But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, that's a really bad list of of bad things that people can do, sins against God. And the Bible says this, the next part of that verse, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of uh, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So the penalty of our sin is death. Romans 6.23 says, uh, for, for the wages of sin is death. What you deserve because of your sin, and what I deserve because of my sin, is the only thing uh, that could ever pay for that sin and, and, and as far as the atone for the wrath of God upon that sin is our eternal death in hell. A place beyond description. All we know is it's described as fire and torment and a, and a terrible place that we don't want to go. And it's kind of uh, hard to understand exactly what that is. But we read the Bible and we know for sure that place exists. We like to think we're all going to heaven, but because of the fact that we've all sinned, we deserve to go to hell. And that's a scary thing. If you've ever even told a lie, according to that passage of scripture, and I've lied, I'm sure you've lied. Uh, the Bible says if any man says he has no sin, he's a liar. And so if you said that I haven't sinned, well then you're lying and that is a sin. The Bible says uh, that we all fall short. So that's terrible news. But what I want to give you is the gospel. The gospel means good news. And I want to give you the good news about how you can know for sure you're going to heaven. Romans 5, 8 says this, But God commended his love. He proved his love to us. He showed his love. He commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Knowing all the sins, past, present, and future that we would all commit in the whole world, the Lord took it upon himself to die on the cross as a payment for that sin. And the Bible says uh, that, that he did this as a gift to us. Now, earlier I read a verse that said the wages of sin is death. What we get because of our efforts and the fact that we have all fallen short, what we deserve for that and what we get as a payment for that or a wage is death but the rest of that verse says but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord you see it's a gift now three times in the book of romans chapter 5 it calls it not only a gift but a free gift as if uh, there was any other kind of gift right because somebody might say well sure it's a gift but i've got to do this for it and that for it well let me ask you this if i were to give you a gift and it had your name on it, and I said, I've already paid for this. I've done everything necessary for you to have this. And so that would be a gift, right? But if I said, I've done everything uh, uh, for you to have this, it's got your name on it, but you have to pay me $1,000. Well, that definitely wouldn't be a gift. That would be a, a purchase of yours. And if I said, you've got to be really, really good, and I'm going to watch you, and if you're good enough, I'll give you this gift, that wouldn't be a gift. That would be a reward, something that you deserve for what you've done. And the Bible says we don't deserve 
from our works. In fact, Isaiah says uh, uh, even our righteousnesses, the good things that we could do are us filthy rags to God. And so we don't deserve that. We need somebody to provide it for us and pay for it. That's what Jesus did. And so, again, uh, the illustration of a gift, if I were to say this is yours, uh, I've done everything that you need uh, to pay for this. I've already taken care of it. Then it's your gift. It's a free gift. I couldn't give it to you and come back a couple days later and say, you know, I changed my mind. I want that back. That wouldn't have really been a gift to begin with. And I would be a liar and a thief to take it from you. But I assure you that God is not a liar or a thief. One of the famous verses in the Bible, John 3.16, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. There's that word again, gave. It's a gift. He gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, how long is everlasting Everlasting is forever, right? It never ends. And, uh, and he says that you shall have everlasting life. John 3, 36 says this, He that believeth in this, on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The most important thing to God is that you would believe in the gift that he's provided for you, Jesus Christ. His death and his burial and his resurrection, the Bible says that's the good news because he did this as a gift for you and for me. One more verse about it being a gift and not by works is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. That's an important word. We'll get back to that. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If I could earn my salvation by giving to the poor, uh, taking care of people, doing all sorts of wonderful works, and then I would say, here, look what I've done. I deserve to go to heaven. And that would be pride. God doesn't like pride. That's why I say even our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. We don't deserve to go to heaven. The only way we can go to heaven is by having the free gift. Why faith? Why is it so important to have faith? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The reason he's so pleased by faith is because we're trusting in him and not ourselves for our eternal salvation. We're trusting in him, and so that delights him. He wants us to believe in him and to trust him. So let's go back to this illustration, because you say, Okay, okay, I believe and I would like to have that gift, but what if I don't believe enough? I mean, how do I know that I have eternal life? Well, so it's not a matter of how much you believe or the way in which you do it. It's about making a conscious decision to trust in Him and to put your faith in Him alone for your salvation and to decide you're going to do that. Back to the illustration of the gift. If I said this has your name on it, I've paid for it, I've done everything that you need to have it, and then you just walked away and never took it, it would be yours, but you wouldn't have it. You wouldn't possess it. You have to receive it. And the Bible says a lot about this uh, receiving of salvation. John 1, 12 says, But as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You and I have the great privilege of being called a son of God if we would accept his gift and be born again. That's where we get that phrase, to be born of God, the Bible says. Not born in the flesh, we've already done that, and this flesh is going to die. It's sinful, it's corrupt, it needs to be, uh, uh, it needs to perish. But spiritually, inside us, we can be born again unto life everlasting. How do you do that? How, do, how am I born again? How do I receive this gift? Real quickly, the Bible says this, Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, confess means to profess or to admit or to claim uh, Jesus Christ, to confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. That's the gospel message. 
then uh, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, the Bible says, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then a couple verses later it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Calling on his name and believing, trusting what he did is what is necessary for us to receive that gift. It's not a work that we can take credit for or, or say, uh, look how good I, I did. We're simply receiving the gift, receiving what he did. And how we receive that is not only by deciding that we believe it and we trust in this gift, we trust in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross, his death, burial, resurrection. We understand uh, who he is according to the Bible. And we place our faith in that and we call on him with our our mouth with our uh, with our heart really just just calling on him and so what I like to do is give people an opportunity to receive him as their Savior to receive this free gift and there's no such magical prayer where you could just say a sinner's prayer and if you say the right words then you're automatically saved and going to heaven it's not that it starts in the heart and then when we call on him uh, we're simply just confirming that, confessing with our mouth, and we're calling on Him. And I like to uh, just give a sample prayer. You could pray something like this. Again, it's not a magical prayer, but you could say something like this. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to die and go to hell. I thank you that you have paid the price for my salvation. I'm so undeserving of it. But I thank you, and I believe on Jesus Christ and I'm asking you now to save me. Amen. And if you pray a prayer like that, meaning that in your heart and deciding that this is a gift that you're going to receive, the Bible says that you're born again. You're a child of God. At church, we call each other brothers and sisters. And the reason we say that is because we have the same Heavenly Father. Spiritually, we are, we are a family. We're a family of God. And the Bible makes it clear that we're not supposed to forsake the assembling of ourselves together with one another. If you have trust in Jesus Christ, you're saved. Praise the Lord. You don't have to go to church to go to heaven. But the Bible says if you're going to follow the Lord, if you're going to build upon this faith, uh, then you're going to have to begin to follow him. Get involved in a church. Be part of a church you know, that can teach you the Bible and show you how to grow in your faith and uh, live out your salvation for others to see and to make your Heavenly Father happy. If you have any more questions, please uh, don't hesitate to contact us. And I'd like to talk to you more about baptism, about joining a church and the things that are involved there. Uh, but you never have to worry. There's nothing else you have to do to be saved except receive that gift. If you've done that, Praise the Lord. We want to know about it. Please contact us and let us know. Thank you.